To a sprawling city of 12 million people now on BBC World News, at the moment threatened by an increase in dengue fever, striking outside its usual season, which has no cure. This week, Hot Cities is in Jakarta. Torrential rain in the dry season. Flooding when there's normally drought. Desert where there used to be grass. Dans la nuit du 12 au 13 août, il y a eu plus de morts à Paris qu'aucun bombardement n'a fait au cours de la Seconde Guerre. Tens of thousands of deaths in cities across Europe from freak heat waves. Even more taken to hospital. Is this a taste of our future? Climate change is already profoundly affecting public health across the globe. Evidence is mounting that climate change is beginning to have a dramatic impact. So what will it mean for the health of the world's population, half of whom live in densely packed cities? Jakarta is a sprawling city of 14 million people. Mosques and slums stand side by side with 21st century skyscrapers. It's an international financial and business hub. Motorbikes are still the best way to negotiate the gridlock. In the poorer parts of Jakarta, things are more basic as people struggle to make a living. But all across the city, there is growing concern over a new and potentially lethal health threat. Hospitals are dealing with more and more cases of a disease health experts in the city blame on climate change. But already, the people of Jakarta are responding. These women are attempting to tackle the disease head on. They are hunting for larvae. And if they are found, this is what happens. Smoking out the enemy. The process is called fogging pumping out clouds of insecticide to protect people from the mosquitoes which carry dengue fever. The foggers work quickly, covering whole areas at speed. The mosquitoes have nowhere to hide. People can only stand by and watch. They know these are desperate measures. Who knows if they will work? Around the world, patterns of health and disease are changing. But how much of that is directly caused by climate change? With changed climatic conditions, there are certain vectors that are going to thrive much longer on a much larger scale. And all of this would lead to a greater chance of disease. Friday prayers, and Jakarta's largest mosque is packed solid. Indonesia has the world's largest Muslim population. But even prayers can't seem to hold back the relentless march of the disease carrying mosquitoes. A new case of dengue fever at one of Jakarta's public hospitals. Its victim completely listless. If she develops the most serious form of the disease, she could die within hours from internal bleeding and shock. What is worrying Dr. Caroline Mars is not just this girl's symptoms, but that she is seeing yet another case of dengue at this time of the year. Traditionally, dengue only strikes in the wet season. But Koja Hospital in North Jakarta has been reporting at least 10 new cases every day for weeks, and it's June, theoretically the dry season. Pasien per hari datang ke rumah sakit Koja sekitar 10 sampai dengan 15 orang pasien dan sampai dengan saat ini kami merawat sebanyak 50 pasien. Seperti kita ketahui bahwa 10 tahun terakhir ini kami uh, temukan uh, terjadi uh, peningkatan pasien pada akhir-akhir ini setiap tahun dan setiap bulannya secara merata. The surge in dengue cases is clearly putting a huge strain on the hospital and its staff. Uh, beberapa tahun terakhir dengan jumlah 
kasus yang meningkat sedemikian tajam ya itu sulit sekali uh, uh, dari sisi pelayanan kesehatannya rumah sakit rumah sakit itu sulit sekali untuk uh, mengobati mereka mereka dalam jumlah besar. Nah sekarang kalau jumlahnya semakin lama semakin meningkat ini menjadi uh, sulit terkendali lagi gitu untuk mengatasinya. For Jakarta, increasing outbreaks of diseases like dengue will have profound consequences. More and more people will be unable to work. The signs are not good. Dengue flourishes in urban environments, and Jakarta is as urban as it gets. Ten-year-old Rosalinda Manurung has just been diagnosed with the most severe form of dengue, grade three hemorrhagic fever. She's in terrible pain and is critically ill. There is no cure for dengue. Her parents can only wait and hope she will pull through. Ngeri, sedih banget. Pertama saya pengen nangis. Mendingan saya aja sakit daripada dia. Itu aja. There is no vaccine to prevent dengue. So the disease is sweeping through the district where Rosalinda lives, transmitted by infected mosquitoes. Her neighbors have already contracted dengue, so has her father. Ya, pertama-tama kena lemas, mual, pusing, muntah-muntah, dan tidak bisa ngapa-ngapain kerja, tidak bisa beraktivitas. Jelek ini masalah penyakitnya. All the doctors can do for Rosalinda is treat her symptoms and put her on a drip. If her condition deteriorates further and she develops internal bleeding, she will need a plasma transfusion. There are four strains of virus which cause dengue fever. Most are transmitted by the mosquito, Aedes aegypti. When a person is bitten, they develop a fever which lasts three to seven days. And if things become serious, tiny red spots from internal bleeding. Kemudian uh, pasien uh, dalam keadaan begini harus segera kita bawa ke rumah sakit. Uh, biasanya untuk gejala-gejala dini itu pasien bisa ditangani uh, lebih baik dan bisa cepat sembuh. Tetapi kalau ke pasien di bawah dengan keadaan yang lebih serius lagi, uh, biasanya memerlukan perawatan yang intensif dan kadang-kadang bisa menimbulkan kematian. Dengue expert Dr. Gustan Siaryam is alarmed by what he's seeing. Dulu, demam berdarah dengue paling banyak di musim hujan. Saat ini, sepanjang tahun, pasien tetap ada yang kami rawat. E, dengan pengaruh e, iklim, sehingga pasien demam berdarah dengue makin bertambah e, dirawat di rumah sakit. Jakarta is the dengue capital of Indonesia but it's a relatively new disease to the city. The first outbreak was in 1968. By 2004, there were nearly 21,000 cases, and in 2007, more than 35,000. But what is causing the disturbing increase? University professor Budi Harianto has a good idea. Ya, biasanya itu terjadi pada saat musim hujan, yaitu sekitar bulan November, Desember, Januari, sampai paling akhir bulan Maret. Gitu. Itu uh, 20 tahun yang lalu. gitu. Nah sekarang ini berubah, dan ini juga sangat-sangat uh, tergantung dengan perubahan iklim itu sendiri pada saat ini. Seperti tahun 2005, kita lihat sepanjang tahun itu uh, musim hujan, dan sepanjang tahun juga kasus demam berdarah itu tinggi. These days, dengue outbreaks regularly occur from January to June, which includes the start of the dry season. But increasingly, it's not dry anymore. Torrential downpours drench the city even in June, and with it comes flooding and pools of clean, warm water. It all adds up to ideal breeding conditions for the dengue virus and the mosquitoes which carry it. 
Ya, jadi nyamuk Aedes aegypti ini yang membawa virus demam berdarah itu biasa dia bisa berkembang biak di air yang bersih, air yang jernih. Nah, biasanya air jernih air jernih ini bisa didapatkan dari katakanlah dari air hujan. Terus kemudian tertampung dalam kontainer uh, atau di bak mandi misalnya atau di tempat-tempat bekas kaleng dan sebagainya. Nah, jadi biasanya ini ada di sekitar perumahan gitu. Jadi kita bisa bayangkan kalau perumahannya itu padat Ya, banyak perumahan itu penduduknya padat rumah-rumahnya maka tempat-tempat itu menjadi semakin banyak sehingga mudah sekali nyamuk ini bisa berkembang lebih uh, cepat It is not just health that will be affected by climate change in Jakarta As temperatures increase much of the city will also be vulnerable to sea level rises 